when you put on drag, it gives you that confidence. It's kind of like projecting an introvert into an extrovert and projecting that into the universe. So this is like an armor. I started getting into drag around 1992. At first, the club scene did not have straight folks going to it. And the clubs started to get mixed. One night I was at work and I realized that there were actually people from my college there and I freaked the fuck out. I'm in the physical therapy department, all the football jocks are here, and if they realize it's me, gays are not permitted in that school, much less inside that department. So from that point, I told all everybody around me, I said, at no point will you ever call me by any other name than Vivacious. New York City back then was not about trying to look like a female. It was about trying to find the most avant-garde look, art, fashion, things that were structural, things that were larger than life. It was, I'm going to take cones and put them on my head. I'm going to put them on my chest. A lot of celebrities used to come into the club kid scene and look at all the artwork and run with it to the fashion world. So they were literally getting their inspirations from the club kids. Every single LGBT person that dresses in drag, their presence in drag is a form of being an activist. They use that presence alone just to start an internal dialogue. It could be somebody who hate everything about gays, and the minute they see a fierce drag costume, hey, can I take a picture with you? Oh, my uncle is gay. And meanwhile, the whole time, they've never admitted it to themselves that they had a gay uncle, but that might force them to open that up. You use your art as a performer and speak. And then once they get used to the art, then they want to extend the olive branch and say hello. And then they realize that you're no different than they are. And then they want to then introduce you to their friends. I am energy. I am positive. I am over. I am fierce. And I am gorgeous. I am vivacious.